This is the story of how I got arrested in Uzbekistan. Let me explain. Now this is gonna be a bit of a different video to what I usually make, but I thought I might as well tell this story. So it all started when I'm on a trip in Central Asia. I'm visiting Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan and finally Uzbekistan. Now, as I think you can see, I'm, I'm no longer in Uzbekistan. I'm currently in Sweden. Don't, don't you worry. Don't get me out of prison yet. So I flew in to Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan without any problems. Then I took a bus from there to Almaty. And from Almaty, I took a sleeper bus, which was really, really fun actually, to Uzbekistan. And then I crossed the border there. See, it isn't really there the problems happened. Or, you see, on my travels, I'm carrying one black bag. And in the bag, I have a camera, I have my clothes, and I have a drone. Or maybe I should say, I had a drone. But see, I had no problems on the border. I got stamped into Uzbekistan. They checked my bag, there was an x-ray machine. They, they just nodded and said, okay, yep, <laughs> all good. Everything was fine, I thought. Fast forward and I'm in Tashkent, the capital of Uzbekistan, about to catch a train to Samarkand. But at the train station, you also have x-ray machines like you have at airports. Now, I didn't think much of it because I had no problems before, but guess what? In a couple minutes, I'll end up in a lot of trouble. So I put my bag through the x-ray machine and I don't think much of it. After a little bit, it comes through the other side and they ask me if I have a drone in the bag. And to which I of course say yes, because I haven't had any problems or didn't know anything about anything beforehand. Well, <laughs> after a little bit, the whole room is filled with police people and no one speaks English. I can speak a bit of Russian, but no one is able to communicate to me what the problem is. Now after this, they ask me to follow them where I'm taken to the police station at the train station. And here they kind of take my drone. I show them my license that I have from Norway for the drone. And I thought, that, okay, maybe that's why they're, you know, spending so much time, but no. <laughs> they take my passport and they do a lot of scanning. I still don't know what's happening. And then I see my train that I was originally gonna take to Samarkand leaving the platform. And now I'm thinking, oh shit, <laughs> what is going on? That a policeman asked me to follow him where I'm taking to a car. Now I'm thinking that, okay, maybe they're finally done. Maybe they're just gonna send me to the other train station to make the train there to Samarkand. But no, that's not gonna happen. So what I end up doing, is that I go ahead and I pull up Google Translate because no one has still told me what is going on. I ask the policeman via Google Translate, what is the problem? To which I get the answer back, everyone saw what you did. We have cameras everywhere. Oh shit. I'm then taken to what I think is the main train station, at least for tourists. They take my passport. I'm getting a bit stressed now because I still don't know what's happening. And then I'm put in an in interrogation room. They basically tell me that I need a lawyer and a translator. I'm still super confused. So I ask them again, what is the problem? To which they reply, drones are super illegal in Uzbekistan. Now, I'm actually a bit shocked. Not because drones are illegal, that doesn't really surprise me, but the fact of like no one stopped me at the border, they saw that I had a drone in the bag. And when I read online, some say that it's illegal, some say that's okay, and some say that I can end up in prison for three to five years. Then it says that I can't leave the country because if I do that, I'll end up in a lot more trouble. All right, where was I? So I started reading online and I found a similar case of a Russian woman who got arrested in the same situation that like I did and she was arrested for three weeks. So in a hurry, I ended up finding her Instagram, sending her a message there and we organized to call each other on WhatsApp. Now this was on a Friday and Monday, the week after, I get called in to do another interview with the same questions. So nothing more happens. I thought we can do some uh, urbex while we're doing this because so you guys keep on having your attention span. And then on Wednesday at 11 p.m. I get a message from the police officer actually telling me that I have a court case at nine in the morning the day after. And he also tells me that I need an interpreter or translator. And I told him like, I don't know anyone here. Can you give me a translator? And after a bit of talking back and forth, he agrees, okay, I'll find you a translator. Now the following day is the first day. So I show up there at 9 a.m. I haven't gotten any information except that I need to be there at 9 a.m. and that I need an interpreter. Now at the police station, I still don't get any information about what's happening and what's going on. I remember how I told you that apparently the police officer was gonna get me a translator. Well, after an hour of waiting, he 
comes to me and tells me that my translator has just bailed. He didn't show up. Look at this, by the way. And all the... Not escalator, but you know, to flatten asphalt. Now I'm starting to get a bit more stress. Previously I thought I would just <laughs> figure out a way, but now I don't know who's gonna be my translator because the only people I talk to in Uzbekistan, I maybe talk to for five minutes. So it would be kind of insane for me to just tell them to, hey, you know, you know me, the random Norwegian you met. Well, can you drop everything you have and just help me out with this court case? So without many options left at my disposal, I figure out that, okay, I know that there's at least one guy that speaks English at the hostel I'm staying at. Let me call him. Now, normally, you know, people at hostels, they are, or hotels, they're used to you booking a room for staying there for the night. But I'm pretty sure I'm the first one that's like calling up hotels and asking, hey, I don't want to book a room. I want to book a translator. Can you help me? Now, as you probably can imagine, this whole situation doesn't really work out. Me calling the hotels doesn't really do anything. They're just confused. So what I do is I contact the people I know and uh, I get a message back on Telegram from one of the people that I talked to for like five minutes. But it tells me he can be there in 40 minutes. Now, this would be OK, but I was only given an hour, an hour to find a translator. So it's now been about 40 minutes. So he needs to be there in 20 minutes or else I am screwed. So in a last attempt, I run over the street from the police station to where there's some kiosks and I ask the person there <laughs> if they can help me. Only problem is that that person in a kiosk, she can't speak English, nor can she speak Russian. She can only speak Uzbek. And of course, if you use Google Translate, which I'm pretty sure you have, you know that like translating from English to Spanish, it's okay, but translating Uzbek to English and vice versa. It doesn't really work. It's, it's, it's a mess. So I type in help, I need a translator and it has to be a man because that's what I'm told. Now, in return, she gets back, help, need translator, I am not a man. So if she wasn't already confused, she's definitely confused now. Now I have previously sweared by that Google Translate can probably get me out of the most situations, but I'm uh, just starting to see that this might not work. But then she understands what I'm trying to communicate. She grabs her phone and starts to call people she know. Now while she is calling, the policeman that I had had as a contact person appears, tells me that I need to follow him because the court is soon gonna close because it's a uh, victory day here in Uzbekistan. So quickly, while the policeman is dragging me away, I get the number of the person at the kiosk that is trying to help me. Now, here comes the plot twist. Because as I said earlier, I only got the information that I need to show up at the police station at nine in the morning. So naturally, I think that this court case is gonna be held at this police station. But no, it's that's not where my court case is gonna be held. So the policeman, he asked me to follow him and I'm thinking he will be taken to a room inside a police building. But instead we pass by the police station, we go under where the metro is, cross the street and maybe walk like five or 10 minutes to another building. Now I'm thinking, how the hell am I gonna explain to the two translators that are now on the way where I am? Now keep in mind that the only way I'm able to communicate with this translator is via the woman in the kiosk who doesn't speak English or Russian. So I need to translate every single message before I send it over to her. And then when I get to the building where my court case is gonna be held, I'm still on my phone trying to communicate with the two translators where I'm supposed to go. And then a the policeman, he tries to take my phone, but I'm like, okay, you need to coordinate this. You need to, you need to tell them where they're supposed to go. I give my phone to the policeman, hoping he will figure it out and just tell them where they're supposed to go. I'm then taken to a room where I'm told to wait before my court case will start. Now, in the meantime, while all this is happening, I'm getting messages from the woman in the kiosk telling me that my translator or interpreter is outside. Now, the only problem is now I'm in this waiting room, but I have no clue where the police officer is. And then I get a message from the other translator who is telling me now that he's also outside. Ah, this is turning into a mess. I then try to find a policeman and after a while I find him and tell him to just communicate with the translator outside that is trying to call me where he should go. And then the translator comes and my court case starts, right? See, I had imagined like a big courtroom with like a judge and all these people. 
but instead, no, we're just taking to a small meeting room where it's me, the translator and uh, investigator. And then for the next couple hours, I'm basically just there to tell my story while he writes it down and then I need to sign a lot of documents. Now the kind of weird thing is that the investigator, he spoke perfect English. So I had no clue really why I needed a translator, but okay, oh well. And then after a while, he tells me that I'm free. Now, even though I thought that this was the end of the story, it's not. Together with Suredin, my translator and the woman at the kiosk, we go out for lunch and after that we go to the victory park because it's victory day as a kind of celebration. <laughs> and again, like I said, this is where I thought the story would end, but no, it doesn't. Because the same day I get a message from the policeman telling me that I need to be back at the police station the day after. But now while all this is happening, I'm on my way to Tajikistan because I was told that I'm free. You know, earlier I was told that if I leave the country I would get a lot of problems, but now since seemingly everything is cleared, at least that's what I've been told, I'm like, okay, I can leave the country finally then and go to Tajikistan. Now, when I get to the border, I'm a bit suspicious that I'll be stopped. And once again, at the border crossing, they have an x-ray machine where I need to put my bag through. But ironically, this time they ask me if I have a drone in a bag. And of course, this time I need to say no because they have confiscated it in Tashkent, the capital. I then go to get my passport stamped and they're kind of looking at my passport a bit weirdly. I'm wondering, okay, shit, is there anything like in my passport now that says, okay, maybe stop this guy, he has a drone or something like that, or don't let, me, let him cross. But no, they're apparently just really surprised to see Norwegian people crossing this border. I then crossed into Tajikistan, spent a couple of hours there before I needed to take a plane back from Tashkent, the capital in Uzbekistan. And after this, I actually never heard back from the policeman at all. And uh, this is where this story ends, but I have loads of content from Uzbekistan, from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, which I will definitely be posting soon. So stay put for some crazy adventures. Fuck you. We are late because of you. We are late because of you.